Hi, this is John, and here I'm going to show you how to create uh, a line graph in Microsoft Excel based on some uh, data. So, what I have here in Microsoft Excel right now is actually uh, data from a lab that we conducted in my AP Physics class. So, uh, what we did was is we rolled various balls down a um, shaft and then released them onto a horizontal, uh, a second horizontal shaft. Um, we had a meter stick set up next to the shaft and we uh, recorded in slow motion the ball traveling down this horizontal shaft. It should be traveling at uh, constant velocity. And so what we did was we played back the recording that was in slow motion so that we could read the stopwatch at every position that the ball was at. And so from this we were able to collect quite a bit of data as you see here, 29 different data points. And so what we want to do is we want to plot this data come up with a, uh, a, uh, an equation of the graph to see what the uh, velocity of that pinball actually was as it was traveling down the horizontal shaft. So here I have the uh, 29 data points. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can make a line graph in Microsoft Excel and first I'm going to take you through the hard way. So the hard way what we're going to do is we're going to use this actual um, raw data right here. So the first uh, position that we were able to mark was the pinball was at 22 centimeters on the meter stick and the stopwatch said 2.70 seconds okay so that's our first data point and then at 2.77 seconds it was at 23.2 all the way down to 5.37 seconds and uh, it was at 70.5 centimeters on the meter stick so in order to create a graph what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna go to the insert tab and instead of going straight for the line graph, we're going to do a scatter plot. So hit the down arrow on the scatter plot and select scatter. All right, and this is going to bring up a blank um, area here that is supposed to be your uh, graph. So what we need to do now is we need to put the data into the chart area. So there's two different ways that you can do this, at least. Um, so the first is you can click the select data button up here in your ribbon or you can just right click anywhere inside the chart area and select uh, select data. Okay, so uh, that brings up this little window here and in order to pull up our uh, time and position data, all right, we need to go to legend entries or series. Uh, every set of data that you put into a chart in Microsoft Excel is called a series. So we want to add a series. And this series name is going to be pinball position versus time. Okay, so that is going to pop up at the uh, chart title up there. Okay, the series X value. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the independent variable, in other words, what goes along our horizontal axis. And so we're going to hit this uh, up arrow right here in order to select the data that we want. And time is going to be our independent variable. So we're going to select all of those right there and hit enter. There we go. It just uploaded all of that into there. Now the series Y value. Um, we're going to delete what Microsoft Excel has already inserted in there for us. Then we'll click on that up arrow again. That allows us to select what we want from our data, and that's going to be position. Position is our dependent variable, so it will be the vertical axis. And there we go. So we hit OK, and hit OK one more time. And now there is all of our data points plotted. Our first point was at 2.70 seconds. Okay and it was at about 22 centimeters so yep we don't have our data flip backwards all right but what we don't have okay and is a big no-go is we don't have um, titles for our axes so we need to add those in so let's go over here to add chart element on your ribbon and you're going to click on that and there's an axis titles and we're going to go and select primary horizontal this will give us our horizontal uh, title down here and if you triple click, it highlights everything that's in there. And let's change this to time and seconds and parentheses. Okay, so now our horizontal axis is properly labeled. Now we'll go to add chart element, axis titles, and select the primary vertical. 
okay? And the default is to do the uh, vertical up and down like this, which is perfectly fine. Once again, we'll triple click to highlight everything inside that box, and we will title this position in centimeters. And there we have it. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is, is we need to add our trend line, okay? So our data, as you can see, looks fairly linear. So we can assume that our trend is also gonna be linear. And again, um, there's more than one way to add the linear regression line. You may have seen up here when we clicked on add chart element, there is an option for trend line down here. And then you can select the type of trend line. Uh, what I like better because it pulls up more options immediately is right clicking on the data point and selecting add trend line. Okay, by selecting add trend line, it brings up either a pop-up window depending on your version of Excel or it brings up a side tab over here on the side okay and here's all of your options for formatting your trend line okay so if uh, you selected add chart element and gone down to trend line and selected linear all of this stuff would have already been done for you and it would have popped up over here with the line type and we'll get to that in a second but I like to format my trend line myself so uh, to double check all the um, settings here. So as you can see, there's all kinds of different ways that you can format your trend line. You can make it exponential, linear, logarithmic, polynomial power, moving average, okay? Our data, we said, looks linear, so we're gonna do a linear regression on it, okay? Um, there is the option to forecast forward and backwards, okay? And what that does is it extends your trend line out to the right or down to the left. Um, however many uh, the period is based on the distance between the average distance between your data points okay so uh, we don't need to mess with that we don't really need to forecast this one and you'll see why in a minute uh, but what we uh, definitely don't want to do is set the intercept okay uh, setting the intercept especially in a um, physics uh, type um, experiment um, forcing your trend line to go through zero zero for instance uh, is bad practice and the reason for that is is that because you're you're checking the data that you already have and setting the intercept to zero zero means that you collected a data point at zero zero and oftentimes we need to see if it goes through the point zero zero because if it does go through the point zero zero then it's directly proportional the two values are directly proportional but if it doesn't go through zero zero then it's not directly proportional there's some sort of uh, factor in there that's moving your graph uh, up and down or your data up and down okay so don't set the intercept unless you have an absolutely good reason to all right but what we do want to do is set the dis uh, display the equation on the chart and we're going to display the R value on the chart okay so there they are all right and let's triple click inside of here and let's make this thing bigger we'll go to home we'll make it to we'll change it to 18 so we can see it nice and well all right and I'm gonna move it to right here okay so Here's the equation for our line, y equals mx plus b. So m is the slope, and the slope is 18.4, and that would be centimeters per second, because slope is rise over run. The rise of our graph is in centimeters. The run of our graph is in seconds. So our slope is 18.4 centimeters per second. So that is the average speed of our pinball as it was going down the horizontal track at a speed of 18.4 centimeters per second. Here's our y-intercept, and our y-intercept is negative 27.2 centimeters. Now here's why you don't want to force this thing through the origin 0, 0. You assume, of course, like we all would, that um, at zero seconds it has traveled zero centimeters. And uh, intuitively, we definitely know this is true, but so how do we get a negative 27.2 centimeters right here? Well, recall that in our data over here, Okay, the, uh, the way the meter stick was set up, okay, the first place that the uh, pinball reached the meter stick on the horizontal track was actually about 10 centimeters, okay, and 2.7 seconds later it was at 22. All right, so uh, what this means is, is that if you force this uh, through zero, zero, then you're no longer saying that at 2.7 seconds, it was at 22 centimeters. It was uh, way, way, way further ahead, okay? But it wasn't, 
alright, and that's simply because of the way that we set up the, the, uh, the experiment, alright. So the R squared value here is supposed to be a representation of how well your uh, data fits the, the graph, or vice versa actually, it's, it's how well your graph fits the data that you provided it, okay. The R squared value, the closer it is to 1, the better um, a representation that the trend line is of your graph. And this is true for, for linear regressions to be sure, okay, but um, when you're doing exponential or power uh, especially, such as you graph the data of a uh, titration that has two or three different titration points and you want to make a, um, um, a mathematical model of the curve of your data, uh, the R squared value then may be close to one, but the graph may not fit your data very well. So be cognizant of that. Um, know though that the R squared value, the closer it is to one for a linear regression, then the more spot on uh, your data collection is, okay? Uh, the better your trend line is matched to your data. Okay, so how then do we make this, um, this trend line actually be closer to um, reality. We know that the ball should probably be at zero centimeters at zero seconds. So how do we adjust everything so that our start time is also our start position? Well, here's how. And now I'm going to show you the easy way to make this graph. So let's just go ahead and uh, we're just going to delete this one. Okay, and notice here I have in time and in position. So this is normalized time and normalized position. What I mean by normalized is, is I'm going to push everything back to a start position and a start time. Okay, and in order to push everything back to a start time, I'm going to use this time and this position. That's going to be my start position and start time. So that means I have to subtract 2.70 seconds to get to zero and 22 centimeters to get to zero and time and position respectively. And since I have to do since I do that for, for those two, I have to do it for all of them. So let me show you how that's done. So this is really cool. Um, you're gonna hit equal sign, and then you're gonna come over here to box uh, cell A2 and select that 2.70. Notice that it populates uh, your cell with A2. Uh, you could just type A2, that will work as well. Uh, then you're gonna subtract 2.70 hit enter and there we go it has you can see inside the uh, function here that we've got equals a2 minus 2.7 so this is a2 we subtracted 2.7 from it we got zero now notice this little square down here at the bottom right corner of your cell alright so instead of meticulously typing all uh, equals a3 minus 2.7, A4 minus 2.7, A5 minus 2.7, instead of um, going through all of that for every single one of these cells, we can simply hit this square right here. Notice my cursor becomes a plus sign. So we click on that um, square and we drag this all the way down to here. And there we go. It has copied that same function for every single one of these cells. And notice that it bumps down the um, the cell number for every single one. So the next one is A3 minus 2.7, A4, A5, A6, A7. Look at that. It's like freaking magic. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing for position. Equals, select cell B2, that's your 22 centimeter. Subtract 22 centimeters, hit enter, and there we go. B2 minus 22, that's zero. This is B2, it's 22. So 22 minus 22 is zero. And again, we're gonna use that little square right there. It turns your cursor into a plus sign. We'll drag it all the way down, and boom. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so now to show you the easy way to make the graph. Let's highlight all of our data here, okay? Make sure that your independent variable is on the left, your dependent variable is on the right. It's just like if you were making an XY chart to, um, to plot on a, on a graph, okay? Your X is always on the left, your Y is always on the right, because they make um, they make uh, points on the graph. So, um, and your points are X, Y. So this is the same thing. This is X, this is Y, X, Y, X, Y. These are all points that are gonna be on the graph. All right, so let's go to insert. And again, we're gonna do the scatter. 
Hey there. Most of our work is already done for us, but we don't have a chart title. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it and we're going to call it pinball position versus time. We need our axis titles back again. So let's go over here to add chart element, axis titles, primary horizontal. That's going to be our time in seconds. Then we'll go over here to add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical, triple click. And that is our um, position in centimeters. All right, almost there. And now we need to add our trend line. So we right click on our data point. Hit add trend line. And it doesn't matter which data point you click on, by the way. We're going to make sure it's linear. We're not going to set an intercept. We're not going to slide it forward or backwards. We like our data just the way it is. Um, we can display the equation on the chart and display the R squared value. And notice that this is the exact same um, equation or the exact same slope as we had before, the exact same R squared value. The only thing that has changed is this Y intercept. Okay. Now notice that it's still not uh, a Y intercept of zero. That is our position. It doesn't intercept the position at zero, but it's very close. That's five and a half millimeters. Okay. Um, so our R squared value is very, very close. All right. And our speed still comes out to 18.4 centimeters per second. So let's go over here and uh, let's pretty this up some. We want, um, not this, this. Make sure your trend line is selected. And um, what we want to do is, is we want to make sure that it is a solid line. I like red. And we'll change the dash type to straight line. And there is the trend line for our data. Okay. So. That's about it. Um, that's the important stuff to show you. Um, if you want, we can all we can put both of these graphs on here at the same time. Just simply select select data. Right click, hit select data. Let's add a new uh, legend entry. We'll call this uh, series non-normalized. Okay. We'll select our um, x values ourselves. There we go. And we will select our Y values ourselves, but first we have to delete uh, what Excel has shoved in there for us. And so we select the original positions. Hey, looky there. Let's hit OK. And OK. All right, so that is the equation that goes with the red trend line. Um, let's change this trend line, trend line color right here to purple to better match. So we got blue data points and purple line and over here we will have, we'll add a trend line and we'll make it uh, orange with red and let's display the equation in the R value, R squared value, excuse me. We want the color to be red. There we go. And a nice solid line. Oops. Nice solid line. All right. Let's blow this up to 18. Go. So you see, R squared values are the same. The um, slopes are the same. Okay. What's different? This Y intercept. Okay. So there we have it. There's how to create a line graph of your data. Set up your graph on Microsoft Microsoft Excel, and uh, manipulate some of your uh, data if you need to. So I hope this helps. Thank you very much.